Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items for you. Number one, this is a this is called a six by six program, which means every institution, six institutions, only has six minutes to share great information with you. So we hope it's just enough um, in a really fun format that you'll want to hear a little bit more and do some further research. We also know that you're gonna have some questions. So feel free to put those questions in the Q&A feature at any time, type out your question, but also note the college or university that you're directing your question to so that our panelists can answer appropriately. This is a webinar, so your cameras and your microphones are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, again, I really hope that you enjoy this format. It's a great way to see multiple schools um, in a short amount of time, and maybe some that you have heard of before, and some that you're going to be exposed to for the first time tonight. Sign up for more sessions. There's a whole three hours more tomorrow. And then finally, um, this is being recorded this evening, and so the recording will be available within one week at, at strivescan.com slash pencil. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. First up, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from Misericordia University. Take it away, Christine, whenever you are ready. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Christine Marks, and I am an assistant director at Misericordia University, and I work with all of our transfer students. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about our school. Um, we are located in Dallas, Pennsylvania, which is in the northeastern part of Pennsylvania. We're right by the Scranton Wilkes Bear area. Um, we are within two hours of Philadelphia and New York City, and we have buses that go right through our campus to each of those as well. Um, our school is a smaller school, so we do have approximately 2,500 students, um, and that's between full time, part time, online, and graduate students. Um, we offer 37 traditional majors uh, for our students to choose from, and we do have a variety of minors, specializations, and certificates that students can add on to their major, um, so they could kind of customize their academic program to what they want. Uh, class sizes are right around 19 students is average, so it is going to be very individualized. Um, once you get in your academic program classes, uh, typically, the average class size is right around 11 to 12 students. Um, for transfer students, our most popular programs to transfer into are nursing, medical imaging, health science, medical science, business, education, and psychology, to name a few of those. Um, and we have some exciting news for the fall 22. We are adding an environmental science major um, for students. So for some of our admissions requirements, financial aid, we are on rolling admissions, so you don't have to um, worry about deadlines for applying. Our application is free on our website. Um, it only takes about 15 or 20 minutes to fill out. Um, for the GPA requirements, we are looking for a 2.0 to a 3.0, and that's going to depend on your academic program that you are applying to. Uh, certain programs are higher, like the health sciences. Um, but that's the range of GPA that we are looking for transfer students. Uh, we don't require SAT or ACT scores for any of our academic programs for transfer students. And we do have fall and spring starts. So depending on when you are looking to transfer, we can definitely accommodate you for um, starting at a new school. Um, as far as transfer credits go, we do accept a maximum of 90 transfer credits and a maximum of 61 credits from a two-year school. Uh, that 90 can be total from a variety of institutions or just one institution. Um, so we do try to maximize your credit transferability uh, when you do look at Misericordia. Um, we do review unofficial transcripts, so if you are interested, you could send those over to us and we will review those, give you an unofficial credit evaluation to kind of see where you stand right off the bat. Uh, for financial aid, we do offer a variety of scholarships, but some of the main ones that we do offer are going to be our merit scholarships. Uh, we do offer Phi Theta Kappa scholarships. 
as well as a variety of institutional aid as well. Um, tuition is approximately 36,000 a year with room and board, the total is right around 49.6. Um, and with financial aid, we do bring that down quite a bit as well. We have a variety of uh, extracurricular activities on campus for students to get involved with. Uh, some of those would include Division Three athletics. Um, we do have a bunch of intramural sports. We are very community uh, service oriented. So we have a lot of students that will volunteer uh, our blue chip animal shelter right up the street, um, adopt a grandparent is popular, Habitat for Humanity, a Relay for Life as well, just to name a few. And we do have over 40 clubs and special interest groups for students to get involved with. So there is a lot for students to um, take part on campus. So our two most important and used student services are gonna be our Student Success and Writing Center, um, which is tutoring and writing assistance, um, pretty much any help academically that you need, this is where you would go for that. So a lot of students do take advantage of that. And then our Insulaco Center for Career Development. Um, this is a definitely a popular program, um, our guaranteed placement program. It's going to be career prep workshops. Um, so resume building workshops, mock interviews, and the guarantee is that when you graduate within six months, you'll either have a job or acceptance into grad school. Um, if you don't, then we will find a six month paid internship in your career field for you. So it is a great opportunity to have some guarantee graduating from college, but also get a lot of career prep um, information too. And then we do have a multiple uh, job fairs on campus each year. Um, and then, so this is just a little bit snapshot of Misericordia and kind of what we have to offer. We do offer visits in person and virtually year round. So you could definitely sign up online or give us a call and we can help you set up that visit. Um, that could be taking a tour of campus, um, our upper campus and lower campus, meeting with faculty, meeting with an admissions counselor um, and current students to kind of see if this is the right fit for you. Um, and then that is my contact info. So if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks and have a great night. Christine, thank you so much to you and Misericordia University. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you um, Juniata College. Molly, take it away whenever you're ready. Hi, thank you so much. My name is Molly. I am a Senior Associate Dean of Admission here at Juniata, and I work with all of our transfer students. So thank you for taking some time to learn about Juniata today. The Juniata community is made up of just over 1,400 students from across the country and around the world. Students come from 30 countries and 32 states, and 24% of our student body is BIPOC. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to 10. Average class size ranges from 17 to 19 students. Um, we have over 100 clubs and organizations, 21 Division III varsity sports. We do not have Greek life, and 94% of our students live on campus for all four years. So if you're looking to transfer to a residential experience, this is absolutely what you would be getting. We have been on campus, and 86% of our classes are being taught in person during during COVID. Maybe the most interesting and unique thing about Junietta College is that we do not have majors. So that's language that you won't hear on campus. Instead, we have what's called the program of emphasis system, and it allows students to have a flexible, personalized academic experience. We don't ask students to choose a major, but we ask you to write with the help of your two academic advisors an academic plan that works for you, that meets your passions and gives you an opportunity to study what you love while preparing you for what comes after Juniata. You can choose from a designated POE where some of the courses are laid out for you. Examples would include biology, sociology, um, education, for example. You can have a multidisciplinary POE where you bring in multiple programs from different academic departments, or like 30% of our students, you can fully create your own program. And the small circles that you see, including things like dynamics of competitive organizations, contemporary law enforcement, 
community organization and democracy are all examples of personalized POEs that students have created. Just as important as the work that you do in the classroom is the work that you do outside of the classroom. And 95% of our students will engage with at least one high impact practice before graduating. Starting as early as your very first year on campus, you can do research with a professor, one-on-one -on -one research in a lab or in a field like you see a photographed here. 80% of our students will do at least one internship before they graduate and internships are available in the Huntington area where we are located, also across the country, especially during the summer months and also internationally where they can be paired with a study abroad experience. 55% of our Juniata students will study abroad at least once and we have 59 programs in 24 countries across six continents. You can probably guess which continent you can study abroad in. Programs can range anywhere from a week to a year and you will work with our study abroad office to figure out what works best for you. 100% of the academic programs at Juniata allow you to study abroad and your financial aid and scholarships will transfer with you. Juniata offer, also offers a plethora of community gate engaged learning experiences as well as student teaching experiences for those interested in education. Our goal is for all of our graduates, regardless of what your career might look like after graduation, to have the intellectual and collaboration skills needed to be a successful and active contributor in your field. In a typical year, 30 to 35% of Juniata students go on to graduate or professional schools after graduation. Additionally, 96% of our students graduate in four years. 90% are graduated or in graduate school or employed within six months of graduation. 85% of our pre-medical and health profession students gain admission into those programs. And we have a 100% acceptance rate into law school. Needless to say, whatever your, your future looks like after Juniata, we will help you get there. The best way to describe the Juniata community is traditionally non-traditional. Here you'll be a part of a community that dates back to 1876 and many of our traditions date back almost that long as well. Here you see photographed storming of the arch, madrigal and lobster fest. I just participated in Madrigal. It looked a little different this year because of COVID. So instead of being inside of our main dining hall, we held it outside, um, but we were so grateful to be able to continue that tradition even in, an, in kind of a weird year. Um, we have some more traditions coming up, including Mountain Day and our graduation ceremonies, um, but there are so many ways to be involved in the traditions really help to bring the whole campus community together. As a transfer student, there are two deadlines to keep in mind, depending on when you're hoping to start. If you are hoping to start in the fall, we will need your application and all of your materials by August 1. And if you're hoping to start in January, we will need all of those materials and your application by December 1st. We have been test optional since 1998, so you do not need to send your test scores unless you did really well and you want us to see those, um, no pressure. We also guarantee merit scholarships for all of our transfer students and they are the same as are available to our first year students. And we have a PTK scholarship as well. Um, and then lastly, there is no application fee. So you can use the Common App for transfer students to apply. Um, and I look forward to chatting with you if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Molly, thanks so much to you and Juniata College. Next up, I have the uh, opportunity to introduce Immaculata College or Immaculata um, University. Sorry, Danny, take it away whenever you're ready. All right. Hi, good evening. My name is Danny Liu. I am the Transfer and Community College Coordinator here at Immaculata University. Immaculata University is located in Malvern, Pennsylvania, which is 40 minutes away from Philly. We were founded in 1920 by the sister servant of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Immaculata was originally an all-women's college, the first all-woman Catholic college in the Philadelphia area. Since our founding, we have become a university that now houses three colleges. 
We are co-ed institution and are proud to offer graduate and part-time studies in addition to our traditional undergraduate courses. Here on this slide, you'll be able to see our 60 plus different majors and minors and certification programs. A lot of our majors that are highlighted here are popular programs as for our transferring students and brand new programs that we have offered to our students. Here are some fast facts that make Immaculata stand out. Immaculata student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. So for every 10 students that we have, we have one faculty member. At least 93% of our classes have less than, 20, less than 30 students, which makes our education more personalized. 93% of our 2019 graduate have completed internships, student teaching, clinical rotations, or field experience. And 94% of our class of 2019 have secured a job or attended graduate schools within nine months of graduating from Immaculata. Here on this slide are lots of ways to get involved at Immaculata. We offer 40 plus different clubs and organization here at Immaculata. We are a division three sports. So we focus on your education as well as the sports you'd like to play. We have 23 varsity sports teams that compete in the Athletic East Conference. This past fall, we have launched our first collegiate esports team, which competes in a national association of collegiate esports in games such as Overwatch, League of Legends, Rock League, Madden, Madden, FIFA, Super Smash Brother. And as you can see on the picture on the left are our renovated sports arena. Here are more photos of our IHM Student Center, which students can be able to hang out, chill before classes even start. We heard our students who are looking for areas to hang out as well as gaming areas. So we built the new Student Center just for the students for more eating options, as well as gym area, as well as a place to relax before classes even starts. We are extremely excited that we have started to begin groundbreaking of our new science center, which was aiming to complete in the summer of 2022. This building will be over 1500 square feet of new spaces for our science students to utilize. It will also include our state of the art animatage table for virtual reality anatomy and dissection for our science students. Here about transferring to Immaculata. So any students who are looking to transfer to Immaculata, if you have more than 24 credits, will also need to see your previous college transcript or conduct certification form. And if you have less than 24 credits, it will be your transcript as well as your high school transcript to determine your acceptance. If you are a transferring nursing student, we are accepting transfer nursing students at least a 3.0 GPA with three prerequisites already completed and at least two prereq and at least two letter recommendation and a nursing essay. We can accept up to 65 transferable credits and our tuition for this year um, has not been above 27,000. So we are currently, our tuition right now for this year is 26,900. We do offer merit-based scholarship to all of our transferring students ranging from 5,000 to 14,500. And we also offer PTK scholarship along with associate grants if you graduate from a community college or a two-year institution. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you so much to you and Immaculata uh, University. Oh my goodness, um, we have already heard from three great institutions, but we still have three to go. So next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Karen University. Um, Billy, take it away whenever you're ready. Sure. Hey everybody, my name is Billy. I'm from Karen University. Um, I wouldn't be your admissions counselor. That would be Luke Gibson and I'll get you his contact information at the end. Um, but I'm going to be going through some important things about Cairn University. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about is our mission. This is something that we really focus on uh, here at Cairn. Um, we do this for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons is it, it really encapsulates what we're trying to do as a university. Um, we have a strong biblical foundation. We started as a Bible school close to 100 years ago. And so one thing we like to offer is that you don't have to choose between a major or a degree program and also getting a good biblical foundation while you're here. So every student is taking 30 Bible credits um, while they're here. 
Um, that is in addition to whatever major that is, whether that's biology or business or any of our other majors, uh, you'd be taking 30 Bible credits. Um, in addition to that, you would also um, have your biblical foundation and your faith integrated into all of your classes. So whether you're in a speech class or a science class, whatever you're taking, um, your professors are going to be actively engaging with your faith and what you're looking to do um, after college. Um, we like to say that we're in the just right location. We are about um, 10 to 15 miles outside of Philadelphia. And so it's about a 10 to 15 minute drive uh, or fit 40 minute train ride. Um, in addition to that, we're about an hour and a half outside of New York City and two hours outside of Washington, D.C. Um, that means that a lot of our students are actively in Philly throughout the year, um, whether that's uh, student teaching, whether that's internships or ministry opportunities. Um, we are really involved with Philly. Um, also, I have a lot of students who like to just go to the art museum regularly because it's such an easy uh, ride. We are actually right outside the train station. Um, not just Philly, but also our local suburb is just beautiful. Um, students like to come and hammock or we like to fish in our pond, um, have lunch on campus because it's just a beautiful area. Um, in addition to that, there's also lots of great sports and arts. Um, lots of Eagles fans come to Cairns because they're just 40 minutes from uh, Lincoln Financial. Um, here are some fast facts and some numbers about Karen. Um, so we have 70 different degrees and programs um, and are, we're about 1,500 students. Uh, we like to say that we have just the right size where we have enough stuff going on, enough stuff to do or to major in um, that you'll never be bored or have to look for something to do. Um, but again, we have, we're small enough that you'll be known. We have 11 to one student to teacher ratio. Um, that, so in every class, your teachers are gonna know your name. They're gonna know who you are. And then as you get through your program, um, professors and staff will know what your aspirations are, what you're trying to accomplish and help you get through that. Um, in, in addition, we have a 96 uh, job placement rate or grad school placement rate. Um, and that's because a lot of our faculty and staff have great connections um, and helping get there. And also a lot of people know Karen graduates in the area. And so they're helping to try to get you into those areas and people are asking for our graduates. Um, here are some just fun information about the application process. Um, our, our application is on our website. If you go to karen.edu slash apply, um, it'll be right there. We have waived the um, application fee for you. Um, in addition to that, we also have uh, merit scholarships as well as uh, most of the scholarships that we offer freshmen are available to transfer students. And so our mer merit scholarship goes up to 13,000. Um, and then there, again, we have other grants and awards um, as well. Um, in addition to that, our registrar offers a free uh, credit transfer evaluation. So we'd be able to see how many credits we would take in um, before you make the decision to uh, come to Karen or not. Um, and again, our counselors are looking at you as a whole student. They're not just looking at your um, GPA or just your transcripts. They wanna see that. Um, obviously you're going to school um, to get a degree, but they're interested in what you're trying to do um, with your life, with your degree, what you're hoping to do after college. And so they're hoping to talk to you, get to know you. So all that's taken into consideration in addition to um, your application. Um, so here are some next steps as you think through what does transferring to Karen look like. Um, reach out to uh, Luke for more information. I'll give you his information right after this. Um, contact admissions uh, and schedule a visit. Um, we do virtual visits, but we really want to encourage you to come onto campus um, students who come to campus really enjoy the feel, the meeting people, getting to meet professors. Um, it's a strong family feel on campus, so we really like when people come on and kind of experience that. And again, we really love for you to apply online. Uh, again, it's karen.edu and then just slash apply. And then there is Luke Gibson's information. Um, that's his email and his phone number. Feel free to reach out to him at any time. He's happy to work with you and to get you set up uh, throughout the application process. Thank you very much. Billy, thanks so much to you and Karen University. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Virginia Tech. Jared, take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks so much, Courtney. Um, hi, everybody out there. Let me get everything shared up here. So hi, thanks for tuning in uh, and spending some time with us. I'm happy to talk about Virginia Tech, uh, where I serve as the transfer coordinator and senior assistant director of undergraduate admissions. There is my contact information there, so you can always get in touch with me. And here is a really important link, vt.edu slash admissions 
slash transfer. You'll be able to get to all of the resources, tools, and things that I'm going to talk about uh, right from that main page. That's the main link that you want to remember or visit to learn more about transferring to Virginia Tech. Just want to get us oriented really quick. Uh, Virginia Tech is located in Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, so that is a, a little outside of Pennsylvania, but we do have a ton of students who join us as freshmen and as transfers from the state of Pennsylvania. It takes about six hours to drive from the Philadelphia area. I've done that and going up and back. Um, so not that far, but a nice drive. Uh, overall, we are a large public state institution in Virginia, uh, 37,000 total enrollment, 30,000 total undergraduates. Campus is big and expansive and very, very pretty. Lots of green spaces, lots of open spaces for different activities, including our central drill field around which the entire campus is organized. Um, in terms of thinking about academics, we have a more than 90 transfer majors. So any discipline you can think of, anything that you want to do or you, you want to explore more, uh, you can do at Virginia Tech. When you look at the concentrations, ways to specify your degree, it's actually close to 200 different concentrations and, and, and ways to really specialize. Uh, on campus and off campus, over 900 clubs and organizations you can take part in. So plenty to do, ways to explore hobbies and interests and develop uh, lots of new ones. And a cool stat about one in seven students who earns a Virginia Tech degree began their journey as a transfer, which is really nice. Now, in terms of those academics, uh, Virginia Tech is well known for our engineering programs, our top rated business school, um, uh, College of Science and Research. We are uh, the largest public research institution in the state of Virginia. But again, diverse array of majors in all disciplines from natural resources and environment to the liberal arts, uh, pretty much anything that you can think of, uh, you can do that at Virginia Tech. I encourage you to check out the website and learn more about those more than 90 transfer majors. Um, now, we are a competitive institution, but we can help you uh, make sure you're going to present a competitive application and that you're preparing uh, in the pre-transfer process the right way. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that we review specifically by major. So we admit you directly to the major you want, but we expect that you have prepared for that. We have a resource called our transfer roadmaps that'll help you pick your classes and really shape a pre-transfer schedule that matches up with the major or program that you want to come into. So you can check out those. Uh, know that we're looking at your college work and your college record and that sample size of courses and grades. We don't use your high school work and we don't use SAT or ACT in the transfer review process. When it comes to credits, we have a lot of resources you can use online to match up how your credits will transfer uh, to Virginia Tech using some various equivalents databases through our registrar's transfer guide. So definitely check those out if you're curious. And lots of focused student programming that helps you as you prepare, as you are admitted, and as you transition to Virginia Tech um, through our Hokie Transfer Community, we like to call it. So check out the advising website there if you'd like to learn more about those opportunities. Again, everything can be accessed right from the main transfer admissions page. Um, some important deadlines and procedural uh, information to know. Uh, we do admit students uh, for various entry terms. The spring is a little tricky. It's a uh, space availability and program availability can vary from year to year. Most of our students are coming in through the fall process and we have a handful of students that join us in the summer as well. But these are the application deadlines. It's important to follow those because we are not on a rolling basis. Uh, this year we use the Common App for transfers to apply and we require students to self report their academic records. So we do not use transcripts in our admissions process, which is pretty different from a lot of folks. Uh, so that's that's kind of cool. You want to check back with us on kind of the latest as you prepare for a transfer. Um, feel free to connect with me or our office just to make sure you're, you're staying on top of things uh, in, in completing that process by all the deadlines. Here's a look at the cost. These are the updated figures for, uh, for this next academic year. Gives you a, kind of a snapshot of what it looks like in-state, out-of-state, tuition fees, room and board. Uh, room and board is calculated based on on-campus options and transfer students can live on campus. The vast majority live off campus, but um, there is a dedicated transfer community. So if you are interested in having that residential experience at Virginia Tech, you can do that as a transfer student living and, and working and learning with other transfers, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Check out the uh, Financial Aid and Scholarships Office's website for all kinds of more you know, additional information about 
uh, costs and different tools and things like that to help you see uh, kind of affordability and, and those kind of things. Uh, the good news is there's money to help you pay for school and pay for Virginia Tech uh, through scholarships and financial aid transfers are eligible for all kinds of different scholarships that are dedicated um, or that are open to everybody. Um, for new and returning students, renewable scholarships, different sources of financial aid, obviously. It's important that students apply early and complete the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Um, so again, as you move forward in the process, thinking about transferring, thinking about applying, connect with us so we can give you some advice on making sure uh, you're checking all the boxes to, to have the fullest eligibility for scholarships and financial aid. And then uh, kind of lastly, wrapping this up, there's all kinds of great statistics I could share. If I had you know plenty of time, I would. Um, but I like to to, to really highlight my, my, my favorite thing, the retention rate at Virginia Tech is over 93%. Um, and that's a fancy way of saying how many students come back after their first year, whether they're freshmen, whether they're transfers. Uh, transfers aren't transferring out of Virginia Tech, and it's not because it's a one-size-fits-all experience or program, but really because you're in the driver's seat. You get to customize that experience for yourself academically, your student life, et cetera. Make it what you want. Find your role, grow into it, and bring your strengths. And that's what we want you to do. So stay connected with us. Again, you can find all this information on our transfer site site. You can also stay connected with us on social media. Uh, we even have a pretty new uh, Virginia Tech admissions TikTok you can check out. Uh, so thanks so much again for, for having me and, and feel free to connect if you have questions about transferring. Jared, thanks so much to you and Virginia Tech. Our final presentation tonight will be from Montclair State University. Erin, take it away whenever you're ready. Hi guys, thank you for having me tonight. My name is Erin Samples. I am the Assistant Director of Transfer Recruitment for the Office of Undergrad Admissions at Montclair State University. Um, we are located in Montclair, New Jersey, and uh, I'll get into that in a second. But first, I wanna just show you this beautiful view of our campus. Um, there's some buildings behind us in this picture, uh, but as you can see, um, it has a, like a Southern California architecture. Um, we have a long history in New Jersey, and that's kind of how this, the building started out. Um, so it's very unique to the area. So I wanted to show you that. But um, we have a long history in New Jersey. 1908 was when we opened our doors. We had 187 students. We now have over 21,000 students on campus every year. That makes up our undergrad, graduate, and PhD students, making us the second largest university in the state of New Jersey. Um, although we're large in size, our average class size is about 25. So hopefully, you know, everyone's comfortable with that. Student to faculty ratio is about 17 to one. So again, um, um, you know, you're going to have that in in person connection with your professor, they're going to know who you are office hours are open to you. Uh, there are no TAs at the undergraduate level um, at Montclair State, we do have over 300 majors minors and concentrations. So chances are we probably have what you're looking for. Um, and we can explore that too. Um, our average student comes in with about a 3.2 GPA and I just put that out there. Many students come with 4.0s and 2.5s, um, but we always see, you know, an A, B average is, is typically for um, our freshmen and for our transfer students, um, but certainly not a minimum. Um, about 5,300 students do live on campus, so there's always something going on um, every hour of the day and evening um, and on the weekend. So um, I highly recommend transfer students to consider living on campus. Absolutely, you'll be guaranteed housing if you stick to certain deadlines. Um, and we have a lot of options there, including apartment style living. Uh, we are 12 miles outside of New York City, and that is a big, big bonus for us. Um, being that we're very much in the suburbs, but close enough to New York City. In fact, you could see the beautiful skyline from our campus, and you'll see a picture of that in a moment. Um, but we always say close enough to New York, but you're not paying those those rates, right, uh, for tuition or to uh, for housing. And we do have two New Jersey transit train stations on the campus, uh, which is very unique. Uh, it's a Monday through Friday line. A lot of commuters um, come that way, or um, you can go into the city, you know, for fun with friends, uh, do a project for school, whatever the case may be, and also internships. Um, that's another bonus of being so connected. 
Um, this is our quick brag sheet. I won't go through all of them, uh, but I just want you to see how well-rounded we are. Uh, we get noticed every year by the top publications um, for so many different reasons. And um, it's definitely worth checking out. This information is also on our website, um, but you know, um, 50 colleges that add the most value, 100 national public university, we are a public university, uh, let's see, best business school for people of color, 100 colleges for Hispanics, um, and so on and so on. Now, the 300 majors fall, of course, in the different categories uh, under the colleges and schools. So I just wanted to give a snapshot of that, um, plus the idea of that beautiful skyline picture on the right-hand side. Uh, that is a real picture on the backside of our College of Science um, building. And basically, you could see that from many points across campus. So I definitely recommend for you all to come out and, and visit um, and take a, a true campus tour because it, it's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now, of those 300 majors, of course, we identify some of our most popular ones year after year, and this rings true for both freshmen and transfer students, uh, but we're very well known for um, our School of Business, definitely our School of Communications and Media. In fact, we were deemed the East Coast Hollywood um, education. That's how we got started. Our teacher ed program is super, super strong. Uh, nutrition with a concentration in dietetics. A lot of students come from all over for that and um, a, a bunch of other programs for sure. Of course, a large institution means a lot of activities, um, so many clubs and organizations. We do have Greek fraternities and sororities, intramural and club sports. We are D3 athletics uh, with a traditional football team and homecoming every year. Uh, 60 countries we, we partnered with for study abroad. In fact, I just saw um, an email about that today, about how they're really trying to bring it back for the fall. So that's pretty exciting news. Um, and then the other one I'll point out, Tau Sigma National National Academic Honor Society for Transfer Students. If you have 24 or more transfer credits and a 3.5 GPA that you make your first semester with us, not your old GPA, but your new one, um, you will be eligible to be part of the Honor Society and it brings so many great opportunities. So I highly recommend you check that out. Um, this really is to show you, give you a, a snapshot of how we work with transfer students. We bring in students every fall and spring. Um, they come from all over, so it's a very diverse uh, community. And our application deadline um, for this coming fall, we post it as May 17th. However, um, that's not, you know, we'll probably have rolling admissions. So um, as long as you let us know who you are um, in a reasonable amount of time, your supporting documents can certainly come in after the 17th. And then again, for springtime in January, November 15th is our posted deadline. So I would love for you guys to uh, check out more about us. We have a virtual instant decision day every Tuesday um, that I'll provide also in the chat. And again, my name is Erin and my email address is samplese at montclair.edu. But it was very nice uh, being with you guys today. Erin, thank you so much to you and Montclair State University. I'd now like to invite all of our presenters to um, turn back on their cameras and um, share their expertise with the audience. So, uh, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? And we'll start and we'll go in the same order that you presented originally. So Misericordia University up first. So my advice would be definitely to visit the campuses that you're considering transferring to. So this way you can talk with admissions, faculty, um, and current students to see if the college kind of feels like that right fit and provides the opportunities that you're looking for. My recommendation would be to follow social media accounts of colleges and maybe not the official ones, but maybe the unofficial ones that are totally run by students for students so that you can get a strong sense of the community um, before you apply and before you get to campus. My recommendation would be absolutely, definitely visiting campus as well as seeing the atmosphere of campus and making sure that all the credits that you have occur will transfer over accordingly to the institution. 
I think my advice would be just to like figure out what you're looking for in your next university. Like, why are you transferring? What are you looking for? And then find a school that fits that opposed to um, just picking something. I think I would echo everything that, that my colleagues have shared. Um, I would add to that planning early um, and feeling free to reach out. Uh, so, you know, plan early as you heard. A lot of us have different procedures and policies and expectations and navigating the preparation and missions process. Uh, so plan early, do some research, but also feel free to reach out. I mean, I was a first generation college student. I actually didn't know anything really about admissions teams and folks that could help me and that might be able to answer questions about applying to school and preparing and, and all that. Just know that we're out here and, and we, we like to engage with students and, and for you to ask questions and be able to help you to get to our universities or to, to find something that works better for you. Uh, so always feel free to, to, to reach out. And I would say also, of course, visit every campus, like it was said earlier. Um, so important, I think, in the matter of the first 20 minutes, you'll know if it's a good fit or not. Um, so that's super important. Apply early if possible, because uh, you want to be sure to obtain, you know, the, all the scholarship considerations too. Um, that's a big part of it. And um, and then once you get to the university, make sure you try to get involved in one way or another. Uh, that's super important because ultimately, I think we all want for you to earn your bachelor's degree. We want us to be your last stop in, in that process. Um, so it's super important to get involved in one way or another. And I can, I think that I can speak for all of the panel and say like, we want you to have fun too in this search. And um, every year, you know, you get to learn a little bit more about yourself. And so you know more about yourself um, when you plan to transfer than you did when you started college. And so use that to your advantage too. I am going to ask the panelists one more a quick, quick question. Um, we'll go in that same order. Um, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So in this spring, we have what is called a spring fest weekend, which is like a carnival at Misericordia with games, foods, and a bunch of activities. Um, and that weekend, we also have our color run, which is a huge event on campus. Um, so I would say our students, that's one of their favorite weekends. Mine is a day called Mountain Day. It's a surprise day on campus. Everybody finds out at five o'clock in the morning because our upperclassmen run through the hallways with pots and pans and air horns to let you know it's Mountain Day. Everybody goes back to sleep. And then between nine and 10 in the morning, we bring buses to campus and we bring everybody, students, faculty, and staff to a secret location for an all day party. And it usually happens within the first four to six weeks of, of the semester in the fall. And it's amazing because it's a great reminder that there is a balance of work and play. And I think the surprise element's really cool. So for that sort of time period up until it actually happens, students play what we call Mountain Day Roulette and try to make guesses about when it's going to be and should they study for the test, should they not study for the test. So it's a cool energy leading up to Mountain Day. Um, and then it kind of culminates in this surprise day of fun as well. My favorite event here at Immaculata is our Christmas Carol Night during the summer, where we basically invited all of our alumni, including our students on campus, to all gather around in our rotunda, which is where our dome is located. And we would all gather together to sing Christmas songs, and we would have all three floors filled with all of the students, alumni who gathered, and all of the songs that we sing during Christmas Carol Night will all be added advertised on the radio station. So that is a wonderful night to gather around with alumni as well as current students. Uh, one of my favorite events at Cairn is uh, we have a Highlander Games because we're called the Highlanders. And it's just this long weekend of a really intense competition um, between all the classes. And we have everything from Mario Kart to Risk to Cow Tongue Football, which is ultimate Frisbee with a literal cow tongue. Um, and our students just get really decked out for it. They come out in kilts and paint their faces and it's pretty intense and people like to brag on how much they won the Highlander Games throughout their time. Yeah, there's so many at Virginia Tech. Um, I think if I had to pick one, I would pick the, the core versus civilian snowball fight. So Virginia Tech has a full-time military lifestyle opportunity, a core of cadets. 
Um, that number is about 1400 or so. Um, and so they like to go out in the first big snow and kind of organize and different kind of, you know, regiments and uh, get ready to, to combat the civilians. And there are far more of those students. Uh, so it's really funny to see kind of the military tactics on display in a snowball fight, just being overwhelmed by, by you know, thousands and thousands of other undergraduates. Uh, we have a lot of fun out there on that drill field in the snow. And I would say at Montclair State University, um, I don't have a, a direct program in mind, but I do want to say that we have the first um, campus diner on on a U.S. campus. Um, and being in northern New Jersey, it, it only seems right to, to be that campus with the first diner. And it's a cute little retro diner. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Faculty, staff, and students love it. 3 a.m. in the morning, you're, you're out with friends or you're studying and you need a break for disco fries. Uh, that's the place to go. It's right in the center of campus and it's super fun. I always love hearing all of these great traditions and audience. I hope that you're getting excited about making one of these traditions, your new tradition, um, as you pick a, pick a college. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, as you close out, you'll have a quick four question survey. So I hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Um, if you enjoyed this format, it's just a really great way to learn about a lot of different schools. Um, sign up for more sessions tomorrow. There's um, three hours more. Um, this recording will be available within a week at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. Um, best wishes with your college shirts, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>